Hello and welcome again to Functional Friday. We took a little bit of a break. We had um, some cancellations show up. And then last week, Friday, I was privileged and honored to be speaking at the leadership conference for South Tech High School trade school in regards to taking your passion and turning it into a business in the trades. So we're back live. We have some upcoming programs and guests with some new doctors, some old doctors, and some new topics and fun things all in the mix. But this week we are talking with Danielle LeBeau. So happy, happy spelled with an I at the end. <laughs> and um, we're going to be talking a little bit about weight loss. And that's kind of, you and I met several years ago, early on when we opened up the shop. And then. Huh, what was in 2012? You remember the exact year, and then we kind of pulled back around when we were working with a woman on um, on her health together. And you've continued that relationship, which is exciting to see in here because I've seen some things shifting and changing. And I really wanted to pull this topic of weight because weight seems to show up in a whole lot of areas. So you want to take a couple of minutes to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah. Um, so um, let's see what I do. I coach people one on one and I also do really fun group events like we'll do adventures together and have fun classes. Um, but I coach people in fulfillment and oftentimes that it shows up as they want to lose weight. Um, but I really coach people in their relationship to themselves and to their life and having a, the most amazing kick-ass life in six months or less. I love that. And that's what attracted me so much to you was because owning the restaurant, obviously we get a lot of people that come in and probably the most common question of somebody who is looking at food and weight loss is they're asking how many calories are in this? How many calories are in this? And we go, we don't count calories. Not that I'm judging anybody that does, but we're using 100% whole food and, and it's all good calories. So how do you approach the topic when somebody's going, well, how, you know, because you've got to be a little bit of a shocker if somebody's coming to you for weight loss <laughs> coaching. And then you go, well, we're not focusing on food at all. How do I count well, my calories? <laughs> What kind of points do I have? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so your question being, uh, like, when someone comes to me and wants to lose weight <clears throat> and wants yeah. to count calories, what do I tell them? Yeah. Uh, that it's absolutely irrelevant that the weight came in a way that you weren't counting, you weren't over counting calories, so we're not going to count calories to get rid of it. That's for sure not going to be the solution. Um, and the weight usually comes on in a period of stress where you're compensating for something or you're in some sort of like some sort of cycle. So we're going to work on whatever that was to first bring that cycle about because that food was just the compensation. Food is actually the solution. Food is not the problem. Yeah. So we're not going to work on the solution because it's already solved. It, it's solved, but we're going to go back so that that problem no longer exists so that you don't need to solve it. We, so that so, has nothing to do with calories. So your focus is on self-love, self-acceptance, and self-care. How do you take somebody who is, let's say, in their late 30s, early 40s, who has struggled with this their entire life, and how do you start baby-stepping through how that can shift and change drastically in six months? Um, well, we look at like all the areas of their life and see which one needs the most attention. You know, is it their career? Is it their romantic life? Is it, um, you know, even just home cooking could be something that they used to do at one time and then no longer do. It could be something super not, not basic, but basic like that. Um, or it could be something like, you know, all the weight gain started right at this point in my, in my world. We're going to look back at that and see where, where things kind of fell offline um, or if like they've always wanted to travel or always wanted to do something, we just start working on their, like their future and getting them interested in what there is to come. And you live into this big, exciting future that doesn't have anything to do with what I call bicep curls of the refrigerator. And you're, you're out there skydiving or you're out there climbing Mount Kilimanjaro or whatever. And food is no longer that important because you're living this amazing, beautiful life. So 
gets you super excited about your life. And then food is just, you know, food. Food is just food. I also think that what we, in the past, we've used food as part of this crutch. But as soon as you started talking about that, I, my thought goes to how often are we using social media now as that crutch yeah, to social media instead of going out there and living life? Because when you're busy doing something that it is that you love, you're not busy on your phone checking in on what the entire world is doing. And a lot of that is the things that you're wishing you could go out there and do. Totally. Although I do have to say, I have used social media as a motivator to do things that I was going to do that I wasn't maybe going to do. Oh, if I do this, I can post about it and look cool. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> so you can use social media as a tool sometimes when you're like, I don't know if I really want and then just do it because I'm going to Snapchat about it. And, you know, somebody's going to think that because I was in I was in Florida by my or in uh, California by myself. I was like, this this roller coaster ride is ten dollars. Do I really want to spend ten dollars to ride a motorcycle by myself? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I do. But you know what, when you're explaining it and when you're talking about it, it is part of your, it's marketing for you. It is. Because yeah. that you can't tell, you can't be asking somebody else to go do and live adventures and live life when you're not going out there exploring and living ad life and taking adventures and taking some risks. That's right. That's exactly I mean, that's right. What, I, it is all about that action step. It's all about that action step. Can you share a little bit about your own personal journey? Because I don't, I would assume you didn't show up here doing this just because this is what you decided you wanted to be when you grew up. So right. what, was your, what was your passion and purpose behind this becoming your career? So I went to nursing school and always wanted to, you know, do something that would make a big impact on the world. And I love caring for people. I love to garden. Um, and at the time I was in nursing school, I was doing a lot of fitness lifting and um, I was hitting the gym a lot. And I started um, a carb cycling diet. So like eating six meals a day um, and every 18th meal. So every third evening was a, a carb loading. <clears throat> so this was like my biggest weight loss commitment adventure. And um, I ended up getting really obsessed and pulling out the scale like that I would weigh my food with and put like the jug of ice cream on top of the scale and then binge eat that ice cream and then record down how much I ate, like how many grams that was and then convert that into calories and then have to figure out how to work that off the next day on the, the Stairmaster. So it's just like, I quickly fell into this uh, weird compensation because I was doing healthy things, but in a really unhealthy way. I was working out and eating you know, really well, but then I would just, you, cause nursing school is hard. I wasn't a big drinker. Um, so I would use food to compensate for my like stressed out emotions and, or like jars of peanut, like, you know, spoonfuls of peanut butter. And, um, that behavior had started 10 years prior, but I, it didn't really go full fledged until, um, nursing school. And then after I graduated nursing school, I went to this really great, um, holistic living program. Okay, I'm gonna, um, have you pause. I'm gonna have you pause because yeah. I know what story you're about to go into, and I absolutely love this story. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say don't share it until your event. Okay, cool. Don't share it until the event because I think that 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 mm -hmm. that's what like pulled me into who you are and what you do and why I loved it so much because you were so real about yeah. I. Well, I'll, I'll take it from my own personal story of life coaching and, you know, was a life coach for 15 years prior to opening up the restaurants. I still dive into it a little bit um, from time to time. But there it, this was when life coaching was just starting to begin spiritual, intuitive work, all of that kind of stuff. And I was seeing all of these people out there doing this work and going and studying this work, but they weren't practicing. The, they weren't walking the walk. They were just talking the talk. And so I, I want you to hold on to that story. <laughs> and if you're watching this, you have to come to the event. We'll post the we'll post in the comment for you to purchase the ticket for that. Um, shoot, now I just, oh, I remember my personal, the very first time 
I had a convert or weight became an, a full on issue for me mm-hmm. was um, I was one of five. My older brother always struggled with some weight loss issues early on. He was put on diets. Salads were his choice. We always had the cupboard in our kitchen that had all of the sweets in it that were hiding. And that was my dad's. Like that was where my dad went and that was where all of his treats were at. But as a family of five, we weren't allowed to go into that cupboard, but I'd hoard food. I'd go to my grandparents and I'd have like tubs of icing, cake icing (laughs) under my bed. And that's what I would eat. And I remember the very first time being on a trip out West to Colorado and being in the car and my parents having this conversation about how they thought I was gaining too much weight. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember how old I was exactly. I want to say I was right around 14 or 15 years old. I I believe at the time I was working, but I became extremely anorexic right after that. And it was like, I am not going to, I I was anorexic, but then I would binge on the tub of frosting that would be Mm -hmm. hiding under my cupboard. I, as women, do you find more women coming into your program or I'm sure it's a mix, but I, we have, as being women, weight has, is always a topic of conversation. Always. You'd be surprised how many men um, really do struggle with their body too. Um, There's a particular, just like the female, you know, archetype, there's a particular male archetype that is what is desired. Um, my clients are 60, 40, 60% female, 40% male. And I think that's just because maybe men aren't as plugged into the conversation that they're having about their body. Everybody has a conversation about, not everybody. Most people have conversations about their body. Um, and not everyone is plugged into the tone of that conversation. Um, when you dress yourself every day, if you actually took a second to listen to the thoughts of how the clothes are fitting you and what clothes you're choosing to, to put on your body, um, you'd hear a, an attitude. Um, and I don't think, I think some men's attitude is like, man, I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter, but it's not like it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I, you know, just this kind of this like uh, re- resignation, whereas women, it often looks like, you know, does this look, how does this make me look and wanting to look a different way? But then it's like, well, this is the way I look and it doesn't matter. Not in a freedom way, but as in a, it's never going to, it's not going to be different or I will never gain weight or I'll never lose weight. And that's just the way it is. Um, And that's just a brief snapshot or snapshot of my opinion. And it might not be the truth. Um, But in my experience, that's what I've seen in my clients and in the people that we have these conversations. So let's talk about intuitive eating, because that's something that you kind of you focus a lot on. What exactly how do you explain what intuitive eating is? So intuitive eating is no rules. None. (laughs) The only rule is that you honor what your body wants, um, which can seem terribly frightening. Um, It is truly giving your body permission to have exactly what it needs and building a relationship with yourself so that you now can be trusted instead of uh, listening to this, you know, one through 10 ways and things to eat the, the do not eat the do eat list and everything like that. No external rules. Everything is inside of you. Your body is going to cue you into what you truly want. If you gave yourself permission to have frosting, it would no longer be as attractive as like, like driving that it's just, it's the same thing. I mean, we all have a rebel in us. We all have a rule follower in us. And when you put the two against each other, you'll just be in this constant war. When you let yourself off and get off of those rules and let yourself have whatever there is, whatever, then you start to live from this other place that just works for you. Yeah, it um, it's part of why we created the menu system the way that we did instead of crossing things off as to what you can't eat when you're following certain eating protocols. We highlighted what it was that you were allowed to eat. And it looks like there's an abundance of everything, no matter which protocol you're working with. 
we're having this conversation oftentimes I'm having um, a doctor on and we're talking about health issues and why somebody needs to avoid food based off of health issues that they're having. We're taking this conversation a little bit differently, which is part of what I like about it, because we're really talking about um, making choices. And I can say, you know, we all have our own stories and experiences. And when when I'm saying this, I've per, I've recently been di- diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder and gluten being the devil for me. Um, however, I have to approach it in a different way. I can't. I can't go through my day to day eating practices saying I can't eat it. And I, I can't, I don't want to obsess over it. If I'm going out to eat, I don't want to be like asking the server and everybody a hundred different questions and making sure and hyper focusing on the fact is there gluten. The truth be told, I'm probably going to have that chocolate chip cookie every once in a while. I'm probably going to end up having that pizza but I'm doing it more consciously based Mm -hmm. off the choices that I'm choosing to make and saying, this is what I want to do to serve me in this moment, knowing there may be a consequence afterward, but I'm okay with the consequence. Yeah. That's a level of self-love for sure. Right there. Cause not having something that you want is weird. You know, like (laughs) here are my dreams, here are my goals and here's a pizza pizza. And I'm not allowed to have that. What? Like that's weird. What you're wanting it for some reason, even if it is just to participate with somebody else's experience, you know, everyone's having pizza and I can't have pizza to belong and have a piece of pizza. And this might fly in the face of a lot of people's um, opinions about, you know, like, well, gluten is gluten and gluten, you know, if you're allergic, then that's just the, you know, the way it is. Um, I do believe that we can alchemize anything. We re- I really believe we can alchemize anything. And I've heard stories of, you know, a woman who is allergic to gluten, but her grandmother's pound cake never bothered her ever. I agree a hundred percent in regards to that. I think that there is, we have, we've created a system in the food arena that, that lacks love. When we're, when we are looking at how cheap can we make something how cheap can we buy something? How in, how devalued we have created this relationship with food that it should, when, you know, I, I you even look back when, when parent, when our, my grandparents went out every Friday evening, it was a fish fry. We went to the country club and it was a celebration and it was yeah. an experience. Yeah. And now we eat out all the time. And we don't think anything about it. It's not about an experience any right. longer. Right. Right. So how would you, um, what are some tips and tricks you can guide somebody through with holiday seasons right around the corner, birthday celebrations showing up? How can you help guide somebody through, because food is so much celebratory in so many areas. And somebody's saying, I want to start moving and making some good new choices for myself that love and honor me. How do I do that when I'm surrounded by all of these things? How do I make those choices? It can be seriously as simple as does this bite have love in it? And that that you could just keep it at that. Like you could be at a holiday party and have had like you're full and like I'm so stuffed right now Ooh, a cookie another one and and you look at it and you're like does this bite have love in it can i take a bite with love with love for myself with compassion for myself with i really wanted to try the vanilla one and they just brought out a new tray does that <laughs> bite have compassion and love in it yes go for it if not then skip it what why are you eating something that doesn't have compassion and love period and that could go that could be a salad if a salad doesn't have compassion and love in it, don't do that to yourself. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. It, um, I remember taking a class. Do you know Bridget Kosner? Kosner? I don't. Not yet. Oh my gosh. You need to meet her. She had this amazing workshop called My Big Reveal. And Ooh. I went through it and was focused on weight. And I left that workshop and my, all I was saying when I was going out to eat Every place I was going out to eat was, what is made with the most love in here? 
Oh, that yeah. is cool. It was that literally so cool. how I started maneuvering through food. And this was way, this was way before the restaurants were created, but it was like going how, what was made with the most love. Wow. And that was how I was ordering off of the menu was because the server mm -hmm. would get excited about something. And mm -hmm. if she's excited or he's excited about it, then they're going back to the ki kitchen and there must be something value yep. all there. Yep. I also look at clothing the same way. When I go to purchase mm -hmm. clothing, yeah. I look at and I go, one, how was it made? Does it make me feel good? Is the material make me feel? It's hard being this conscious. <laughs> it, it really can be. It I mean, really, really can be. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you teach somebody who is so unconscious to now all of a sudden start moving in the direction of being so conscious because that in itself can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, how to teach someone, I don't know, slowing them down, yeah. bringing them down to this present moment and letting them feel the love in themselves. And then the, the thoughts that, you know, aren't love um, or thinking of you know, just bringing them to an exercise, meditation, guided something, anything really. Do you feel that we are walking around in a world where people are shoving their feelings down and don't even know what love feels like? Mm -hmm. I do. And I think that's the source of this, this achy loneliness that we can feel sometimes when we reach outside of ourselves for experience. Um, it's just, you're not, you're not really connected to the truth of yourself, really who you are, the amazing human being you truly are. How? And, how, what was your turning? Like, well, I don't want to go back to that story, but explain a couple of things about your day to day life where some of these choices are showing up and how you maneuver through and the conversation that kind of happens for you. Um, I don't know. I'm 29 years old and I have a growing business. And I know that my time here on this planet, I'm also a hospice nurse. So I am very deeply connected to the time on this planet is precious. Um, I'm getting emotional. Um, nothing, leave nothing wasted. And if you have a goal and a dream, no matter how silly, it's there for a reason and go chase it until you have it because <laughs> it matters. And, um, and I've been practicing that myself. Like, heading fast into my dreams like you know like it's a job and it is my job to to accomplish my dreams and it, sometimes that looks crazy um sometimes it looks busy and sometimes it looks like I neglect the things that I do care about because I'm you know attacking the the because 2018 is coming to an end and I have a couple goals that I need to accomplish by this year um and one of them is weather dependent so <laughs> I will have those done so what is that? Can I ask what that dream is? That's weather dependent. Are you going to go skydiving? No. Um, it's a secret that I need to work out with my family still. So I am honoring my family. I'm trying to figure out how to totally breach it to the rest of my family so that it it's empowering instead of scary for them. Because um, it, it could be viewed as um, something else. So. Sure. Um, well, one, thank you for even sharing that little bit because yeah, that really. the vulnerability that shows up that says, mm -hmm. even as a teacher, we're all working through our own things. Um, we're not, none of us are perfect in what it is that we're doing and what it is that we're teaching. In fact, I think that those are some of the absolute best teachers out there are those that are willing to show where it is that they're struggling and um, still being the student because yeah. I don't think we ever stop growing and learning. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not at all. And I think, and we're put on this planet to learn. We're put on this planet for each other and with each other. We're not here by ourselves. You know, this, this beautiful journey, the mud is the fertile, like who's I talking to? The poop is the fertilizer. Like that is how we grow. Like you can't, it's shit. <laughs> like we grow from, <laughs> The poop. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and owning that, you know, like I, you know, I love it's, I'm a gardener. So, 
So I wish I had a green thumb and could get, I don't even know the difference between a weed and a plant. <laughs> a weed is anything that is not intentionally planted. Yeah, well, when you move into a house and you had this beautiful garden and now you go, what is everything else that just showed up? I didn't plant any of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You can totally cultivate weeds. I'm cool with that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the way you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my garden is full of weeds and I am like, as long as the vegetables keep growing and nobody's competing for resources, we're fine. Like you can yeah. stay here. I don't care. I'm also the same about bugs. <laughs> like the spiders in my house, like, well, I guess you're fine. <laughs> I have a lot of spiders and I actually have a, a love for spiders. I cannot, I cannot kill a spider. I will take them outside or I just live with them. I really don't yeah. care. Like there's yeah. something about spiders that I love. Um, let's go ahead and wrap. I know I don't want one as a pet. I don't want a tarantula crawling around, but my house spiders are fair, fairly cool. We have a good relationship. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's wrap this up just a little bit, but can you give us um, anybody that's listening? Can you give us three tips, three pointers for somebody to maybe focus on somebody to switch the, or something to shift the way that they're thinking about things that they could put into action here in this next week? Um, every bite with love, every bite with love. And if it's not love, don't put it in your mouth. Um, let's see, two more. Be gentle with yourself. Have compassion for yourself. On a scale of five, try to give yourself a five out of five for compassion for today. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, one more. Know that everything is for something and you don't have to understand it right this second, but it's not wasted. Even the weeds. That's beautiful. I love that. And I'm going to add one in there and that's to no matter how often or how frequent or how busy you are, take that brief moment to just stop, pause and breathe. Yeah. Love because it. we're all busy trying to accomplish so much and it's not about winning a race. It's about enjoying the journey and you can't enjoy the journey if you're not alive. And in order to be alive, you have to be breathing. Yeah. What's that song? I want to live while I'm alive. It's my life. Like it, you have to, like you're here to live. Like, let's do it. <laughs> you run a karaoke, you run a karaoke thing. Um, how did karaoke change your life? Oh my God. Oh, it has given me confidence to talk to people that I wouldn't otherwise talk to understand what, what your, what your delivery, what your, like what life is about the audience really. I mean, in a lot of ways, like nobody cares about you up on stage with the microphone and how scared you are. It doesn't matter. They care about the experience they're having watching you do your thing. So just get out there over there with them and you'll have way more fun than being in here trapped. Cause it's, it can be a prison in here. Uh, everybody should try to do karaoke at least three times a year and every time you'll get better and uh, you'll have a lot more fun. And also it's not that serious. Like all the things that you're thinking about in your head, any of it, it's not that, it's really not that serious. We will probably survive it and yeah. it's not going to kill you. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautifully said. Um, Danielle, I want to thank you for joining us um, today on the Functional Friday interview. We will go ahead and share the events in the comments down below. Also, please share your website so if people are wanting to seek you out. If you are watching this afterward, just like this post. Feel free to um, private message Danielle if you've got any other questions as well. Absolutely. And just tap into this community and this group because that's what this is all about. One person can't heal ourselves. We need that community and we need that support. If you are not familiar with who I am and what it is that I do, I am one of the co-owners of Symbol. We focus on healthy lifestyle eating, food as medicine, paleo, gluten-free, autoimmune. We are the place that your doctors are sending you to. So if food is medicine, Symbol is your pharmacy. And Functional Fridays is just our way of educating you and tap and allowing you to tap into the tools and the resources that are out there in your community as well. So thank you for joining us. And thank you, Danielle. I honor and You're I love so you. You're so welcome. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Mwah. Bye.